I'm Alexa Running. I am an author of four different books in progress. One of the books that I'm really, really excited about, it's almost finished, it's called Where I Am. I have the first chapter printed out here, and I would love to share it with you. Okay. gonna sort out my papers here. Where I am. It's a great start. All right. The thing I feel most is the rain. The pummeling, freezing rain and bursts of sodden air when a car rushes past. Out on the horizon above the water, sort of a peachy gray color like Dryerland, drips and glitters with the reflection of city lights on raindrops. From up here, I can see everything. I've stood here for hours now, days, months, ages, skin all loose and saturated, and no one yet has seen me, not a single speckled soul. Maybe I am cloaked by the night and the lashing weather. Maybe they aren't looking right, shielding their faces and averting their eyes. Maybe it's fate that I've gone unnoticed. I close my eyes and feel the headlights on my left, red taillights on my right, imagining the nighttime drivers all sleepy in their toasted cars, feeling the music from their speakers, reaching out and tasting the wet jacket clung to my back, lapping up the rainwater with its notes. I want this to be beautiful. I want it to mean something. As I stand here with my arms outstretched, I only want to feel. This bridge was the very first structure to have employed a safety net during construction. Before that, if you fell, you fell. You would slip on a railing. Your breath would get caught in the middle of your lungs. Your arms would reach out for something to hold on to, and then, desperate, begin to flail helplessly for balance. Your life would stream before your eyes, and then, the soles of your boots making one last desperate attempt to grip, you would fall. Plummeting, hurtling, and then crashing down when you probably had your whole life ahead of you. I bet you had kids, a wife, a family, a dog, two cats, an unable grandmother who stays in the guest room, she will cry at your funeral, dabbing her nose with some vintage embroidered handkerchief, confused and wrinkled and delusional. You probably had a molting yellow canary. A red couch placed cockeyed in the sitting room. A stack of unopened mail on the kitchen counter full of bills and checks and advertisements and sweepstakes garbage and too early or too late greeting cards. Maybe you had a tree in the back of your blazer that you were planning on planting before your wife got off work. A tall and autumn-colored birthday gift for her 39th year. You may have been in the middle of remodeling the family bathroom, painting the walls, nailing the baseboards, fixing the plumbing. White toilet, plastic shower knobs, faux wood linoleum. I'll bet my life you had dinner plans. A night of Scrabble and credit card monopoly. Your wife won't know what happened until she comes home from her long day of cleaning teeth and reading x-rays. Your kids will remain oblivious until the last possible sliver of time. They'll see mommy cry and be confused, stacking their blocks and dressing their dolls, bringing her get-well gifts of rubber toy cookies and portraits drawn with crayon. They won't know until the very end, and you'll be at the bottom of the bay and looking down from the clouds at the grief your slip had caused while you rise up and up and up. Since they hung the net, this didn't happen ever again. Workers were tempted to jump down into it for fun, taking delight in the rush of adrenaline. I'm falling! Oh, Lord, will it catch me? Will it hold? Bounce. Whoa, doggy, what a rush! It wasn't until a beam broke loose and tore through the net, taking 11 workers down with it, that there were any casualties. Only two survived the fall, and the rest were lost in the blue of the bay, each with their own grieving stories left behind. Now, with all its construction being complete, the net is gone. The financing for this bridge, they figured at least 35 deaths during construction into their budget. They have to do that, apply a monetary value to each worker's life. If someone dies, they lose money. Did you know that this is the number one suicide destination? I looked it up, among other things. It will take approximately four seconds to fall. I will hit the water at 76 miles per hour. I'm sober tonight. I wanted to do this without anything obstructing my mind. I wanted it to be me, just me, all me, and I don't like it. Sober, I'm filled with air. Not even air, but negative air. Like a vacuum. Like outer space. I don't feel much when I'm sober. I see more figures of authority than anything else. I am blank. I am null. 
There's no purpose for full sentences or straight posture or good behavior. There's no purpose in anything I do. In this state of mind, nothing matters. Only I matter. There's no pain. There's no suffering. There's no sorrow. Because none of that is real. There's only me and my body and my soul and the way that I perceive these things. Nothing really exists. Nothing at all. I move my hand, wiggle my fingers. That's me. No one else can do that for me. I alone possess control. I alone define myself. The world is the world. People are people. And I am me. I am up to me. And that kills me. I am my own decision. And this, the largest step in my life, is my decision. My life is supposed to flash before my eyes soon. I'm supposed to see a light, hear the sweet breath of angels. I suck in the misty sky, teeth chattering. People with their hopes and their dreams and their optimisms are impossible. I look down, then back, then straight forward, my arms spread wide like a bird, and with my right foot lifting and surpassing the left, I drop. Well, that was my book, The Main Character Dies, so, I mean, it's kind of short. So it starts off with the main character, Tristan Bird, the narrator. Um, he jumps off a bridge. Blech. And the rest of the book is his life flashing before his eyes, fractions of seconds at a time. So as the story of his life is unfolding throughout the book, he's also basically just suspended in midair, you know, between the bridge and the water. It's really interesting and I'm really excited about the sort of dynamic of the story. I'm really looking forward to writing more of it. The main character, Tristan Bird, is actually based on the personality type of an old friend of mine. It was really interesting for me starting this story, you know, writing about this person who I, I, I really loved. I really loved, just as a person, the chaotic nature of who he was. And it was just so intriguing, so beautiful. So I, I started this book, and I'm so excited to share more. Um, I would love to read the second and third and fourth chapters, you know, how, however much, um, based on feedback that I received from this first video. I don't know how many people are going to be excited about just listening to somebody read. I have all this work done that I'm really proud of. I need to share it with people. It's a big deal. This, everything happening <laughs> right now is a really big deal to me. Anyway, like I said, if you if you like what I wrote, you like the idea of the story, please comment below if you want to hear from maybe some of my other books. That would be great. Please let me know. I would really appreciate it. Um, all of the links to other things that I do, my blogs and such, are going to be down there somewhere. Here's the cat. Every YouTube video needs a cat, just for good measure. I don't know, just... Just subscribe. Just subscribe. It would make me happy. And I know you want to make me happy. So thank you. I love you all. Okay, I need to. This is done.